Today we're going to talk about foreign clothing manufacturers bringing down our nation's flag. Also, why aren't people joining our military? And I'm also going to lean in a little bit about why what we call progressive is actually regressive. And also, I might show you a bit of a film of some like deers hiding out in the rain with some Japanese people. It's pretty cute. You know, I like the Bambis in it. Yeah, I like the animals. <laughs> So if it does get a bit weird, we will calm it down with some animal films. However, this is the story then, isn't it? Nike have gone and done the English kit. And what they've done is they've put uh, the flag on the back of the kit, on the collar, and they have caused a storm. You know it. That's the English flag, apparently. Now, these colours are really important. I didn't even think about this. And I have people going, hey, Tim, what's wrong with this? Because they lack the inability to search for themselves. So I've been kind of fielding these questions. Now... I didn't know anything about these colours, so I had to kind of look them up. Like, why is the flag in these colours? Now, what Nike says is this. The New England 2024 National Kit celebrates football heroes of the past with a modern twist. Uh, it's got some dry fit stuff going on. A playful update to the St. George's. If there's one flag you don't want to mess with, I hope Nike learned from this. If there's one flag in the world that you do not want to touch... It's, this, it's the St. George flag. You don't, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it a bit in a minute. But also, here's the thing. I want you to look at that flag there. That is the flag of St. George. Okay, very important. It's the English flag, the flag of England. Now, that's really, really important to a lot of people, including myself. Graphic side panels on the away kit pay homage to forward-thinking fashionistas. Look at the colours. The colours are important. I'll bring it to you in a second. I quite like that kit, actually. Notice the three lines, obviously representative of Richard the Lionheart or Richard I, one of the th commanders of the Third Crusade out to Jerusalem, uh, who also, St. George, apparently, was supposed to be out there as a warrior saint at that time. So those three lines have, have been kept from that era back in 1060-something, and we still use them today. It's a nice-looking kit. It starts. <laughs> leave our flag alone I mean it does it does yeah why have you tinkered around with our flag England flag is that not that do you do this to other countries flags or is it just England now I've seen them mix around with some other flags to be fair but look the, the comments here are just really really against Nike here really against Nike people putting their own flags in obviously this is the flag of St. George. This is our nation's flag. I want you to have a look at that very closely. It's white with the red. It couldn't be more basic, could it, like that? And so we're going to have a look at this. I'm going to work out these colours and how people have got themselves a little bit confused. And we're going to do that at the end of the video. In the meantime, I just want to have a look at then why people aren't joining the military and seeing if we can use bits like this as an example as to why that might be. White men no longer want to fight for a nation that scorns them, says Robert Clark. Now, I've said this for a long time, guys. This does tie into what we're talking about. I'm not going to keep this video too long. But there's absolutely nothing worse for combat effectiveness than a military uh, attempting to use recruitment as a social engineering program, much like the British military have done and the American military have done as well. Look, so already there's a massive fall off in the American military that we're seeing here as they've tried to play around with this. They've tried to put women in just as we did. They tried to put ethnic minorities in just as we did, guys. I think you can see I'm going to tie this flag into this uh, a bit later on, really. The UK Armed Forces are in a similar depressing situation. Recruiting targets are constantly not met. But the main priority is not to get more people to join up. It's to get more non-white people to join up. And what's the issue? Non-white and women. What is the problem here? Well, the majority of people that will join the military are, are, are young white men. I've said this a thousand times. Where's my, uh, where's my... Just seven videos that mention the word white in the title. Shocking demand. UK police seek legal discrimination against white men. Uh, RAF quote scandal exposed on Talk TV. I was on there as well. The truth behind useless white men in the military. RAF in crisis while useless white male pilots could spell... I mean, this is... Remember, it's all there. Uh, there's diversity problems. RAF boss questioned about stopping white men from joining. I mean... So we've, we've got this active thing about not getting white men into the military. Now, you know me, guys, I trained all sorts when I was in, you know what I mean, 110%. It didn't bother me. Back then, it really wasn't an issue, and then it became an issue. I left in 2018. And the article actually mentions the Royal Air Force's shambolic recru recruitment fiasco from 2022 and discovered that female and ethnic minority candidates were prioritised over white male recruits. We're going to jump on, guys. The size of the UK Armed Forces then, shrinking by more than 7,000 personnel in a year. So as we know, there is three people leaving the armed forces for every one 
joining. That should be it's unsustainable. We said this before. And of course, a lot of applicants are being rejected now for many, many reasons. And the table here is very interesting if you want to go into it. And one of the reasons, of course, as we know, is that we are putting a lot of men down to improve female equality. And this, this article here talks about how we keep using that term toxic, ma toxic masculinity. And if we keep doing that to people, especially young white men who don't know any different, they're going to think they're not wanted. And of course, they're not going to apply to the military. They're not going to apply to get in. They're not going to want to get in. They're going to feel pretty soulless. Of course, that's where we come back with things like this kit. It's like another piece of destruction. Let's have a look at a quick film here from a dude that explains it a lot better than I do. Isn't it odd that you as a grown European man have to watch your words or you might lose your bank accounts. The social media corporations might shut down your, your email or even your phone numbers. And still I have this desire to speak the truth. You know, growing up in the Netherlands, I witnessed firsthand how our country began uh, pandering to the immigrants. And then it got worse. Then in the late 1990s, they started pushing for the LGBT agenda. It started with the gay marriage, and now we have surgeons removing wombs from 14-year-old girls. And then came the euthanasia movement. First they said it's just for old people with terminal illnesses. Now, if you're an 18-year-old and you claim you are depressed and you can't heal, or even if you are hearing a high-pitched sound in your ear that you can't get rid of, now these are accepted as excuses for you to have euthanasia, which is basically state-sanctioned murder. And all the while these things are happening, they keep calling it progress. But it's not progress. It's decline, morally, socially, and especially psychologically. And as the icing on the cake, our Western leadership now expect men like me to enjoy being drafted into the armies because we have to fight the Russians. I have to lay my life down in the mud to die for diversity in LGBT and gay marriage, things that I don't give a shit about, and still our leaders expect that I will go along with it or else they'll take away my email and my bank accounts. This is just fucked up. Yeah, I think he's got a fair point, isn't it? Everything is regressive. Whatever they say is progressive is most certainly not. So where do these colours come from? Well, it seems to be that the bisexual flag, I never knew that flag existed, has these colours on it. Very similar to the Royal Air Force colours, incidentally, on the staple belt. But let's skip that, shall we? I'm sure it's nothing connected. And then you can see, if we just go backwards and forwards on that a little bit, is that a coincidence? We've got the, the sort of red, the, what is that, maroon, and then the blue... We've got the red, we've got the red, we've got the maroon, we've got the blue. I mean, to me, is someone trying to drag some kind of, you know, flag into there? And if not, it kind of looks like they have. So you're going to get a lot of people then have a go at people like me and go, oh, you're a flag shagger. And they're going to use the flag of the union to do that, of course, because we are trying to remember these people are trying to bring down every single bit that we hold dear to ourselves. And I want to play you a quick video as well from LBC. You've infuriated me today. I can't believe the way you feel about this flag. Well, get over it. You know, people have different opinions. You, <laughs> you feel, you well, exactly. But you feel that everybody that supports this flag is a, some kind of right wing lunatic. Did I say that? No. Yeah, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said the you things did. that people should get angry about are the ones that went around the cenotaph, right, <laughs> against the against the orders of uh, the Home Secretary, although she didn't criticise them, doing Nazi salutes. Can Where you were you? Where were you in 2012 when it was on the England Strip in different colours all over the place? Why weren't you complaining then? Well, I didn't see it then, but I'm seeing it now, and I think it's I think it's dreadful. We all know what's behind it. So we did wanna, you did you complain in 2019 when oh, Boris Johnson? Yeah. Did you complain in 2019 when Boris Johnson had a Union chat with all the red out of it. It was all blue. But then if it was if it was a different colour, then it wasn't one, was it? Never very patriotic. But anyway. you don't listen very carefully, do you? Because you keep saying things I didn't say. I do. You're not patriotic, though, are you? How do you know? How do you make that because assertion? Because I, because I think people that get angry really about flags, because I think people that get angry really about flags are idiots. That makes me unpatriotic. Yeah, you are unpatriotic. Yes. Yeah. How, how do you... Saying, how, because I don't... Right, you're saying, oh, I don't care about that. I don't care I about don't the flag. Care I care about, about my country, which is more important. You care about a flag and think anybody who doesn't care do about a flag... you care about your country, though? Do you? No. Some people are so, so sensitive. No. They can't no, handle yeah, a little bit of change. Are, oh, are. they've changed it. It's it's a bit different. Yeah. How am I going to cope? Are, it's... <laughs> really, Sue, if you think patriotism is defined by liking a flag and hoping it stays the same way, you're not very patriotic... You're daft. I've actually been on Matthew's show. I wouldn't say he was the cleverest bloke in the world, to be fair. And I do get upset 
about the flag. And I've never seen Matthew fight under it, ever. He's never been to war once. People have been carried off the battlefield with that flag. And talking about the flag, this isn't the flag that they're talking about. This is the flag of the Union, made up of the Scottish, the Northern Irish, of course, and the English flag, not the Welsh dragon, because at the time, Wales was a principality of England back in 1606. So... This isn't a military guy as well. This is a bit weird. I think that this these guys do look a bit weird. He's an ex-helicopter mate, a bit below average, as I've said here, obviously. So, um, uh, below average lefty. I mean, I think here he says, F the Tories, isn't he? So, yeah, there you go, F the Tories. And he says, oh, well, he's in Afghanistan. No outrage over it. You know, the outrage isn't over this flag, mate. It's not over this flag. This is the flag of the Union. Then they camouflaged it so you didn't get shot, you bellow. And that was a mistake, wasn't it? They probably, probably should have left it nice and bright for people like you. But our Prime Minister says, don't mess with the flag on the England football kit. And so does Keir Starmer. I think they realise that you... I think what happens, guys, to be fair, you push the country, don't you? Push, 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 push. Oh, come back a bit. Push, push, push. Come back a bit. Push. How far can we push them? It's boiling the frog, isn't it? You know what I mean? Before you know it. He's really changed the people. I think people are at breaking point at the moment. I think they really are. I think they know what's going on. They're not stupid, are they? I think, to be fair, that woman had a valid, valid point. And, uh, yeah, I think it's all going to go a little bit wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys, anyway. And if you do want to know about those uh, those white men in the Royal Air Force, I'll put a video up here for you there. Just have a quick look at that one. It's, oh, it sets everything straight pretty quickly for you. Appreciate it. Tim Davies, Fast Chip Performance. <laughs>